about. It's not. It's about you asking logical, reasonable questions. This is about taking Obama at his word. You judge me by the people I surround myself with. You judge him by the people he surrounds himself with. Would you want Van Jones anywhere near American policy? A man who says, listen to this because this is new video. A man who says things like this. Human rights has no borders. Um, wherever they're human beings, uh, it's important for human rights activists to show support and to show solidarity. And what we want to see at this point is uh, the rights of the Palestinian people being respected. And at this point, uh, the end of the occupation, the right of return for Palestinian people, these are the critical dividing line, global dividing line questions of human rights. We have to be here. It's a guy who has, who has talked about American imperialism. Does this say anything about Obama's policies? I don't know. Well, let me ask you this. It's not just what he just said there, because some people say, well, that's totally reasonable. Where did that audio come from? Let me play the beginning of this audio. This is Mumia uh -oh. Abu-Jamal, voice of the voiceless, and you're listening to War Times, reports from the opposition, presented by Freedom Fighter Music and Hard Knock Radio. That is the voice of communist Mumia Abu-Jamal. He's on the phone because he's in prison. Why is he in prison? For the execution-style murder of a police officer. Is it a smear campaign to notice that Van Jones associated himself with the effort to free a communist cop killer? But the problem is there are more radicals surrounding this president, surrounding him. You must remain focused. You're fighting for the Constitution. And gang, we're not, even, we're not even at the beginning of round one. As I told you, this fight is not going to be fought with guns. This fight is going to be fought with the truth, questions and answers. If you have the truth on your side, who can stand against it? I didn't ask for Van Jones to resign. If Americans want the version of, the, of America that Van Jones sees, well, that's fine, but we need to have a discussion. It can't be done under the cover of darkness. There needs to be questions and answers, Mr. President. Without publicly rejecting Van Jones, do you now expect America to believe that he has no f influence or access to you or your partners? Oh, sure, there'll be a buffer zone around you. Van Jones is a community organizer of the worst kind. What have we learned about community organizations like Acorn lately? A year ago, nobody knew really what a community organization was. Well, now we've gotten a pretty good look at what some of these organizations like Acorn do. What we found is that ACORN is a terrible organization. They have been described as, as criminal organizations. Are they? I don't know. Congress won't look into it. The media won't look into it. Now comes Van Jones, building an army of community organizers, the disenfranchised, the communist, the anarchist, the prisoners. Worst of the worst attracted to Van Jones. Where does Van Jones go now? Is he just going to be selling clothes at J.C. Penney? Will he be filling up Slurpees at 7-Eleven? I don't know. I don't think so. But let me go back to that tape. You heard the voice of a man who introduced him, Mumia Abu-Jamal. He murdered a police officer with some witnesses claiming he murdered Daniel Faulkner execution style. With the influence of Van Jones and people who think like Van Jones, does that have any bearing on the Cambridge police incident? where Obama concedes he didn't have all of the facts, but he, he makes the statement that presupposes that the police were wrong. How could you do that? Does somebody like Van Jones, who's on cop watch, does that affect the president? I don't know, because we haven't had any answers from the president. This president, like Van Jones, didn't reject, just merely commented that he didn't endorse those views. I'm confused. Because the people Obama surrounds himself seem to help me make sense of his policies, but only if I look at those policies as nefarious to our, con our Constitution. The people that the radical left have been embracing should shock 95% of Americans, should shock the Democrats. The Michael Moore movie is coming out. He calls capitalism evil. Democrats, is that how you feel about our system? that capitalism is evil? 
One of the books that Michael Moore just told an interviewer he is uh, recently reading is a book that I've been warning you about for months. It is called The Coming Insurrection. This is a radical communist how-to manual that talks specifically, destroy the family. Let me go back to the beginning where I shared the good news. It wasn't me that did this, it was you. And here's why that's even better news than what you thought. If it were just me, through back channels, blogs, articles, the left and uber left, not Democrats, but the radical left, have decided that they are going to destroy me in any way they can. I don't relish that thought, but I'm okay with it. I'm a recovering alcoholic. I spent most of my time lying to myself. I'm fine. I found happiness. I've done some pretty bad things in my life. I've owned up to them. You should read some of my books or watch my videos. You want stuff on me? Mm, you just read my books. I talked about it. I fired a guy who brought me the wrong pen once. But here's the point. I had a pivot point, a place in my life where I reached the bottom and realized I couldn't go any lower. I was sitting at the table having breakfast with my kids when my daughter said to me, Dad, tell me the story of Inky, Blinky, and Stinky that you told us last night. They were stories of three little mice who used to make it up. That morning I couldn't remember it. I didn't even remember tucking my kids in because I was drunk the night before. And I had a blackout. I told them, you see how much you can remember. I had to lie to my kids. That hit me pretty hard. That was in 1995. It took me four years to make the changes in my life that I needed to and that I wanted to make. In November 1999, I began to change my life and I have been on a course since then. I still make mistakes, but I try my hardest not to make the same mistakes, mistakes that would bring dishonor to my family. The left has already doctored photos, documents, websites, which frankly only dishonor them and hurt my children. But as I said to my kid this week, there's more to come because some people want to make it about politics and money and not the truth. I will always tell you the truth, even when it hurts me personally. You do the same thing. It was just over 225 years ago that 56 men said this, and with firm reliance on divine providence, we mutually pledged to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. They won't give honest answers to honest questions. I, for one, will give up everything. While we're waiting for those honest answers, perhaps we should have a debate about what kind of America we're gonna live in, what kind of change we, we, we really want out in the open not under the cover of darkness. Hey, major